At the edge of the world, in the remote and barren continent of Antarctica, where the concept of South itself comes to an end, we find a landscape covered in many places by kilometers of snow and ice, and what might be majestic mountain ranges barely visible above the tops of it. And if we descend upon this wild place from the starry depths of space above, into the region called West Antarctica, we find a land long since pressed underneath the sea by the weight of the ice it carries, and shells of ice that go out well beyond the land in the form of floating ice sheets. Indeed, we find there the Doomsday Glacier. Holding 483,000 cubic kilometers of ice, Thwaites Glacier all by itself is the size of the entire United Kingdom, and due to global warming leading to the climate chaos we call climate change, it is melting. So fast, in fact, that this enormous ice sheet could be gone in just the next few decades. All by itself, this immense amount of ice would cause sea levels to rise 65 centimeters, or about 2 feet, and if that doesn't seem like all that much, bear in mind that a rise of a mere 10 centimeters would make much of the modern world's coastlines uninhabitable. But Thwaites Glacier is like a cork in a dike holding back the sea, or in this case, the immense nation-sized glaciers of western Antarctica. Because when Thwaites fails, and indeed it seems more a matter of when than if, those glaciers will begin their own slow slide into the sea, and they will begin their own processes of melting over the next few decades, and this can potentially raise the world sea level by as much as 3 meters or 10 feet. Due to the fragility of this ecosystem which is imperative to Earth's survival, travel to Antarctica is limited, but we can visit it through the mind's eye, or rather through the miracle of modern technology by using satellite imagery as presented through the Microsoft Flight Simulator. Here we are flying through a tongue of open sea that runs deep between the ice sheet. The warming sea has penetrated, and massive icebergs that break off from the ice sheet float out into the open ocean from here. And if you were to visit Antarctica right now today, March 27, 2022, in the afternoon in the time zone of Maritime Canada, this is very much what the sky, land and sea and even the quality of light would look like from the position of Antarctica, as I have the Microsoft Flight Simulator set for maximum reality to not only portray land and sea, but the current time and weather. We see the tongue of the sea below us. To our right, the ice sheet that is attached to the mainland in the distance, and below us and to our left, enormous icebergs that are breaking off from it, eventually to float out into the open ocean. Now the Antarctic ice transpires with the seasons. In the summer, ice breaks off the ice sheets and the ice shelves recede due to the increasing warmth. In the winter, the opposite happens. As cold temperatures descend over the Antarctic, water refreezes and the ice sheets grow. And for long ages, this process was fairly well in balance. The ice sheets were fairly stable. But with the advent of global warming, the melting process is greatly accelerating, and as much as a half mile more of the Thwaites ice sheet breaks off every year. This is not replaced, not refrozen. That ice drifts northward into the warming ocean, where it eventually melts and contributes to rising sea level. This NASA video portrays a three-dimensional perspective on what is happening. We zoom in on a CGI representation of the Thwaites Glacier region over the Amundsen Sea, where we can see a false color representation of the activities of the glaciers. The sea itself is portrayed as gray, and the glaciers sitting upon the land as well as the ice sheet are portrayed in color. If we remove the false color, we can see the contours of the land beneath and go back and study what is happening a piece at a time. Glaciers are plastic, or dynamic, which is to say that very slowly they move over time, but in the Antarctic, this movement has been increasing year to year. Areas in red not only portray the most rapid movement of the glaciers, but in these areas, that movement has been accelerating from year to year. The darker the red, the worse the acceleration. Just to the right and above center screen, you'll see Smith Glacier. Let's take a close look at it, because it is an area in particularly rapid transition. Between 1996 and 2011, this glacier receded some 35 kilometers. This represents a loss of about 2 kilometers of ice per year. This is how it looked in 96, and this is how it looks in 2011. The situation is bad enough that it honestly needs to concern every nation on the planet because not only will the loss of Thwaites Glacier raise sea levels all around the world, but the introduction of so much cold fresh water into the ocean is going to have unpredictable effects on the climate. 
But, as I mentioned earlier, this region is like a cork in a dike, that dike being a massive dam that holds back the vast ice sheets and glaciers of western Antarctica. If this region goes, the ice sheets behind it will then be free to move into the sea. In my previous video, which you can see by clicking on the link above, I noted a study which indicated that if the ice begins to melt, sea level rise will be worse than was originally expected. Much worse, by as much as a third. Because as the weight of the ice that's currently on the land is lifted, that land will begin to rise. You see, the land of a continent floats upon an ocean of magma, which is what our world is beneath its cooler and much more hospitable crust. The land will rise in the same way that a freighter ship being offloaded will come to ride higher upon the water as the cargo is carried away. So if we carry on with NASA's animation and strip away all the ice, we can see how much land there is behind that ice. You can also see the flow lines indicating all the directions that the ice sheets are moving out toward the sea. That ice is likely to continue moving out as melting occurs, and the rates at which this happens will accelerate. And as the land rises, it will dump any lakes of water trapped on it into the sea as well, adding significantly to the overall sea level rise. How bad is the warming in Antarctica? Well, in February 2020, temperatures in Antarctica hit 21 degrees Celsius. That's 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's right, short sleeve weather in Antarctica. And a scientific expedition launched in the region of Thwaites Glacier in 2020 measured, among other things, the status of the sea beneath those floating ice sheets. For those ice sheets to maintain, the sea needs to be cold, ideally below freezing. Seawater can remain a liquid when it's below freezing because the salinity of the water keeps it from turning into ice. But the expedition encountered bad news. The water beneath the Thwaites ice sheet was quite warm, at 2 degrees Celsius or 35.6 degrees Fahrenheit. It is warm enough to continue to promote and indeed accelerate the disintegration of this glacier. At this time, the situation is very bad, and when it comes to what caused this, scientists may be hesitant to point the finger specifically at one thing or another, because absolutes like yes and no are big words in the world of science. However, most scientists concur that the changes in Antarctica very much relate to human activity. As the human population grows, along with our industry and activities and usage of fossil fuel driven vehicles such as cars, along with the decrease of forests and wild green landscapes due to urban sprawl, including things like the development of road systems, and our massive emission of carbon into the atmosphere leading to the acidification of the ocean, we are managing to change not only the climate of our planet, not only the pH of the sea itself, but we are even destructively revising Antarctica's ability to serve as the world's thermostat and reserve for ice. No one knows right now where all of this is heading. Will all the ice on Antarctica eventually melt? It would lead to sea level rise of at least a couple hundred feet, and more so if the ice sheets in places like Greenland also melted. This would radically and literally reshape the continents of our world. But the even more pressing concern is the massive introduction of fresh water into the ocean system would completely destabilize the planet's climate. And the potential outcomes of that are just well, there are just far too many variables to predict. Unfortunately, at this point in time, it looks like the Thwaites Glacier is inevitably going to melt. Many studies indicate that it's only a few years at most till the entire ice sheet breaks off from Antarctica, and this will clear the way for the rest of the glaciers behind it to make their way into the sea. Temperatures in the sea change slowly, and there is probably nothing that can be done about that right now. But Antarctica is an indicator species, so to speak and indicator continent, it is a clear and present signal that it is well and past time that we begin to take care of our world. Thank you for watching. The Naturalist program is committed to the reliable coverage of natural science and environmental issues. If you like our program, please take a moment to subscribe and like.